Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how to make a soluble salt by using an acid. This is a required practical, so it's highly likely that there'll be a specific question on this in your exam. We're going to start by recapping what's meant by a salt and how we make these. Here's an example of a salt, this is copper sulphate. Remember that all salts contain a positive ion. In this case, the positive ion is the metal ion Cu2+. This can come from four different chemicals. Firstly, the metal ion could come from the metal itself, in this case copper. However, I should point out that we cannot make copper sulphate by reacting copper with dilute sulfuric acid. That's because copper is not reactive enough for that reaction to take place. The metal ion could also come from a metal oxide, in this case copper oxide. It could come from a metal hydroxide, in this case copper hydroxide. Or finally the metal ion could come from a metal carbonate, in this case copper carbonate. Salts also contain a negative ion and this comes from the acid. In this case the negative ion is the sulphate ion SO42- and to make this we need to use sulfuric acid. So in this video we're going to look at the actual steps involved in making pure crystals of a soluble salt such as copper sulphate. I'm showing you copper sulphate crystals here. Now according to the AQA specification you would need to know how to carry out this practical using either a metal oxide or a metal carbonate. So we're only going to look at these. We're going to look at the reaction between solid copper oxide and dilute sulfuric acid. But these stages would equally apply to making a salt using a metal carbonate such as copper carbonate. I'm showing you copper oxide here. As you can see it's a black powder. So here's the equipment that we're going to use for the first stage which is making the soluble salt. First we start with a fixed amount of dilute sulfuric acid. This is our limiting reactant. In other words, the acid will run out. Now this is really important. We do not want any acid remaining at the end, as that would contaminate our salt. So we need to make certain that all of the acid is reacted away. Now we gently heat the acid until it's almost boiling. However, we do not want it to boil, as it could bubble over when we add our other reactant, and that would be dangerous. Now using a spatula, we add small amounts of copper oxide to the acid. We then stir the solution using a glass rod. The copper oxide will react and seem to disappear. The solution will turn a blue colour, which is the colour of copper sulphate. Continue adding copper oxide if the solution continues to be clear blue. Stop adding copper oxide if some powder remains after stirring. Now at this point the reaction has stopped, as all of the acid has reacted. We've made copper sulphate and the solution is now neutral. In the next step, we're going to make crystals of our copper sulphate, but first we need to remove the unreacted copper oxide. Because this is insoluble, we can filter it away. To do this, we use a filter funnel and filter paper, which I'm showing you here. Now in the final stage, we need to make crystals of our salt, and to do this, we use evaporation. So we're going to look at that now. We take our copper sulphate solution and place this in an evaporating basin like this. We then heat this gently over a beaker of boiling water. We need to heat this until around half the solution remains. At this point we leave the solution for 24 hours in a cool place for copper sulphate crystals to form. Finally we scrape the copper sulphate crystals onto paper towel and we gently pat them dry. Now we have pure, dry crystals of our copper sulphate. Remember you'll find plenty of questions on this required practical in my revision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. Okay, so hopefully now you should be able to describe how to make a soluble salt by using an acid.